From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. And we're back with more of the strange news you depend on. That's right. I went there. I'm doing the hard-hitting story today about, wait for it, tiny little wrinkly naked baby rat mole things. I'm sorry, mole rats, whatever. They're so creepy, guys. I, 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 I don't know. Do you think they're cute? I got to know. Naked mole rats. I'm not an expert in cute, but I think they would, <laughs> they would find us... Uh, <laughs> Probably repulsive too, because we got all this hair. We're her suit. Ben, you are a master diplomat when it comes to these things. That was expert hedging, and I, I commend you on that. But Matt, I'm gonna need you to have a hard, a hard opinion on this one, buddy. Um, yeah, the, these things are adorable. My son loves them. <laughs> Whoa! And yeah, I mean, he can go to the zoo and stare at them all day long. And he so, digs. Yeah. He digs stuff that looks like burn victims. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I mean, uh, they do. They let, no. let's just say it they out loud. They look like they, Freddy Krueger meets Nosferatu with no hair, and they're perfectly pink, and they have these cartoonish little Peppa Pig noses and weird little salamander fingers. And but here's the thing: they it's a trade off for these little guys because mm. they may be you know uh, monstrosities, tiny monstrosities, uh, admittedly, but they're like nigh on invincible. Uh, they, they live, you know, like I had a gerbil live for like three months, you know, these things for their size and the type of creature they are with their, their analogous, you know, to, to mice or rodents, you know, uh, they live for like 30 years. Um, they, 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 they don't ever see the sun, <laughs> which maybe has something to do with it. Uh, but they also have apparently like, like. Um, Wolverine level like DNA repair, self repair capabilities um, to the point where they're actually studied for a lot of things, one of which is potentially learning something about how that DNA repairs itself in an effort to harness it for treating things like cancer. Another thing is they're pretty much blind. Their eyes are so small and squinty as to practically not exist. Uh, Vestigial, right? That's right. They can barely hear. Um, and that's because their ears can't amplify sound. Um, unlike other mammals, they have this very strange outer hair cells that don't amplify sound. Isn't that weird? All you need to amplify sound is for something to be able to receive vibrations. Um, and apparently this hair does not do that. Um, but this you know, peculiarity makes them interesting candidates to study to help develop treatments for human deafness. OK, so we got two fascinating naked mole rat uh, features, superpowers even right off the rip. But the latest is this. The, you know how there's the old joke about like the, the dogs in France, you know, bark with a French accent or whatever, or do, you know, uh, Norwegian cats ha have a different meow. Uh, it seems silly, right? It seems utterly absurd, but it turns out there might be something to um, questions like this uh, because a new study has shown that uh, naked mole rats actually have dialects and that dialect comes directly from their queen because Ben as you pointed out uh, when we were getting ready to go on today Matt you too uh, they live in colonies like the fake looking ones that, that your son is so taken by at the zoo but they literally live in these underground subterranean that's redundant colonies that are like these you know interconnected little kind of cubbies um, and the it's, it's very much like a beehive situation uh, because the queen is the only member of the colony that reproduces so mm -hmm. every single uh, individual in the colony aside from the queen obviously is the offspring of that queen and the queen is head honcho uh, to the max um, to the point where the queen's vocal peculiarities are mimicked by every other member of that colony Mm, it's a cult. It's a also cult. want to point out they're corprophagist. If you want to, like, they eat their own poop uh, mm. on a regular basis. Well, uh, maybe that's why they live so long, guys. Maybe I'm that's putting, the secret. That out there. I mean, if we I have found it, I have heard 
this is going to sound gross, no, you guys. No, no, no. Drinking your own pee apparently isn't the worst thing in the world for you. There's some no, like health sterile. nuts that are all about it. That's if, not going to kill you. It, well, we're talking like if it immediately leaves your system and then goes back into your system, right? Because the moment the pee pee <laughs> hangs out for a minute, it's it's up to no good as far as bacteria and other stuff goes, right? Am I wrong? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. Well, far be it <laughs> for us to recommend drinking urine. We just want to give you the latest, the latest opinions. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> consumption of feces in naked mole rats should not be held as an example uh, or an aspirational goal for humans. Uh, they're you social. They they are tremendously different from oh. most other mammals. Can I tell you guys just a quick story? Please. Please. So, is it about so drinking my, your own pee? No, I have, I, have a beautiful, I have a beautiful, amazing dog named Penny, and mm -hmm. she is a very temperamental eater. And, you know, we take great pains not to give her human food. But one thing we have to do is give her these little treats, sprinkle it on her food so that she'll find them palatable because she, like the mole rat, is a queen. Uh, and for some reason, the other day we gave her a large treat that's like, I don't know, I, I, it's a yak milk or something weird like that. It was way too expensive, and it was it was like a celebration for her. But she mm -hmm. ate it over the course of a day or so. And then I took her outside, and I've never seen her do this. Took a nice big old dump, and just took a big old bite Ooh. right after. And mm -hmm. it was because it was very reminiscent, and I'm sure smelled like that treat that she just devoured. Oh, wow. God. Oh, you ever well, tried to brush a dog's teeth? Matt. Matt. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> no. Oh, my goodness. That is uh, grosser than gross, as, as the kids once said. Uh, I, I want to really quickly circle back. Okay. Definitely not good for you to drink your own pee. I, that was, it, was, it was considered like a folk remedy, uh, and there are a lot of kind of like old, you know, wives' tale type situations and holistic sure. remedies from the past uh, that involved drinking your own pee, and that specifically was largely because it was just like a readily available fluid, um, uh, and definitely, you know, what you're is doing is removing salts and contaminants from your body so to turn around and drink that back in while sure it, it is sterile and it's not going to like get you sick um it's definitely you shouldn't be reintroducing those things back but enough about mm. eating pee uh, back to eat, mole rats but enough yeah. about drinking pee <laughs> and eating poop um which, which which mole rats do that's where we that's how we got here guys True. that's how we got Corporate here fat, just, uh, that's the word of the day that's, that's the word corporal fat I, whatever when you said that initially ben i thought you were saying corporal fascists and i'm like <laughs> that is a fascinating uh concept that's and a I weird know, take i want to know weird how direction to take that in it would be it would be um but it's true these uh vocal intonations are surprisingly uniform within these various colonies and the study uh comes from allison barker at the max delbrook center for molecular medicine in germany along with her colleagues she studied thirty six thousand greeting calls because they have these little little yelps these little chirps uh from 166 individual uh naked mole rats in seven different colonies that were raised in labs probably similar situation to those cubbies at the atlanta zoo um and these were raised in labs in Germany in South Africa um, and once they were able to kind of I guess separate these out and identify the uh, the different elements of the chirps uh, things like pitch frequency duration um, pitch uh, they were able to train in an algorithm like using machine learning uh, to recognize the individuals within the colony and associate them with the actual uh, individual mole rat, but also the uh, features, the various cadences of the chirps were super predictive depending on which colony the animals belong to, which is a lot like the French meow cat and the, you know, the Norwegian dog bark. Again, not, I'm joking, but it's, it's, it's it, there could be, right? Like, I mean, it, it, obviously there's some internalization going on in with these creatures of their surrounding sonic kind of environment, and they're using that to, uh, to, to generate a slightly different type of chirp. I first heard about this on NPR, and they played some audio clips of these, and, you know, to the uh, the naked 
ear <laughs> there it is. of the human, uh, we would not be able to tell the difference. Um, it, that's why it requires machine learning, because it's literally doing deeper listening, um, honing in on things, uh, frequencies that are either out of our own hearing range or just nuances and subtleties that we'd never be able to pick up on. Um, in another experiment, the naked mole rats uh, also were much more responsive when they heard recordings of their own dialect uh, compared to, to others from other colonies. So this uh, suggested, according to um, this New Scientist article uh, about the study, that uh, this is how they communicate with each other in terms of a call and response, like a dolphin situation. Although that's more like echolocation, but it still is like, you know, sound being transmitted and then returned. Uh, so that's how they would kind of communicate and recognize members of their own colonies in case they maybe got separated or maybe, you know, presumably some of these different colonies exist in somewhat close proximity to one another. Um, the animals also were quick to respond to these uh, manufactured chirp sounds uh, that shared the most features with the dialect that they were used to, um, but still distinct from other members of the community's call. So they were able to kind of like manufacture, you know, from whole AI cloth, new chirps that just took into account a few of those little parameters, but weren't actually, you know, real. Uh, and they, the ones that had the most recognizable features, that's the one that they would typically respond to. You got to wonder, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's funny because I think I hope that I'm not the only person who's run into this before, but have you ever been in a place where people don't speak your native language and you try to make friends with an animal mm -hmm. and then you realize, <laughs> oh crap, this, this dog or raven doesn't speak English at all. I'm just, I'm just blathering at it. Uh, it's, it's weird because animals, especially animals of a higher intelligence can recognize parts of human speech, uh, but it is somewhat I, I, not every animal will have an accent. They have to be able to communicate first. And I, I would be interested to know whether there is a correlation between the naked mole rats extraordinary lifespan, which is like over 30, almost unheard of for rodents. Actually, they're the longest living rodents we know of. I wonder if having that time to be alive allows for the propagation and refinement and growth of this regional or colony-wide accent. I mean, what do you what do you guys think? Yeah, well, I also wonder how much the the queen scenario plays into it. Totally. Oh, dude, hugely. Because there's an amazing detail that I left out. Once the queen dies, the mm. accents become much more disparate. Maybe they, they, oh. they, they sort of start to become more unique. They're clearly very, very beholden to that queen and uh, and mimicking her exclusively. And then I guess, you know, the mimicry probably takes, you know, once it starts, it kind of like spreads. But yeah, once the queen dies, uh, all bets are kind of off. And they're cold blooded, literally. They're literally mm -hmm. cold blooded mammals. Well, it makes me wonder about a bit of a chicken and egg scenario here, mm. though not really. But when you imagine the first brood that a queen outputs, uh, when, when, when the first crew arrives from the queen, right, the first litter, um, I imagine that that immediate exposure in the sounds the queen is making, that's the only sound you're, you're experiencing. That's really one of the only senses you're dealing with besides the touch of moving around within this colony uh, as the, if you imagine yourself as one of these naked mole rats and that first brood experiences that responds to that same sound that you're hearing, you, you know, make it again, mimic it. Then the next brood comes and you hear an entire colony making that same sound. And the queen, the mother, the life giver is also making that sound. I'm assuming since they're mammals, there's some kind of feeding that occurs uh, directly from the queen, from the mother. Um, I'm assuming. I don't well, know that that's true, but yeah, naked, whatever, naked whatever mole, that looks like, I do not want to <laughs> see it go down. Naked mole rats are basically living out that formerly banned X Files episode, Home. Mm -hmm. uh, we, oh. we don't have to go into detail, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And they also They're, look a lot like that weird sewer dweller with the mm -hmm. suction mouth guy. They mm -hmm. kind of look like tapeworm guy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, it's 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 fascinating because. You know, like you said earlier, Noel, uh, this amazing, distinct creature 
holds such potential for human beings, for all other mammals. Imagine being able to, like, it's a trade-off, right? I think we called it a monkey paws situation either before we rolled or, or sometime earlier. It, it's a trade-off. Would you, would you live looking like a human version of a naked mole rat, uh, knowing that you would be essentially immune to cancer, you would not suffer pain from inflammation, um, and you would live a very long time. Would you do that? Would you rather be alive for like more than a century and ugly as sin, no judgment, blind and deaf, mm -hmm. living in darkness? Mm -hmm. I think that's Never. a no brainer. I don't know. Yeah. That's just me. Or would you rather be a naked mole rat sized human that <laughs> <laughs> lives in a colony with a queen <laughs> and you can only make really one utterance? Uh, that is a mimicry of of the queen. What does it sound like, Noel? Can you do it, a? It's kind of a chirp. Why don't we hear one? Okay. What rough chirp slouches toward Bethlehem to be born? That's that's the opposite of intimidating. It, that's the thing. It's 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 a cute kind of mouse like little squeak, and then you mm. see what that's coming from. And, and uh, Doc mentioned before we got going too. Uh, same as me, honestly. Uh, my first exposure to these things was in the, the Fallout series of video games. But in that series, they're like the size of a large dog, uh, mm. but they otherwise look exactly the same because there was nothing these video game designers could have added to make them look more like a post-apocalyptic or terrifying. Um, but yeah, no thank you. Talk. I mean, okay, I got another one for uh, you, Noel. What's scarier? One giant mole rat like that size uh -huh. coming at you or a thousand little tiny mole rats just slowly crawling towards you? A thousand. Uh. I know you didn't ask me, but a thousand, <laughs> definitely. I think a thousand. You can run from one. You can dodge one. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's like a sentient kind of just like moving tide of mole rats, like those little baby dinosaurs in Jurassic Park three, mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking uh, about? Or maybe it was camps? two, the little leaper ones. Yeah, they look real cute, uh, but then they like swarm all over you and pick your pick the, the meat off your bones while you're still alive. Do you think these guys would? What do you think they would do, guys, if they were to swarm you? Do you think they have a taste for human flesh? No, they're herbivores. Really. And and poop eaters. Mm. Uh, but what if uh, we were covered in poop? <laughs> well, then, you know, it's like my uh, what, one of my old instructors used to say, what's the first thing you do if you wake up in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere? Uh, the first thing you do is ask yourself how you got in that situation. You know what I mean? If the, if the three of us are covered in poop, and there's a swarm of like a tidal wave of naked mole rats yeah. rolling towards us. That's the moment, I think, where the video pauses and you hear the VO say, you're probably wondering it? how we got here. <laughs> yeah. Also, might be time to reassess some life decisions at that point. Mm. Or, uh, yeah, no, I agree. And you're right. It, it is the, the quintessential Walter White with no pants on pointing a gun in the direction of blaring police sirens coming towards him. Mm. Only much more terrifying and poop covered. Yeah. Uh, by the way, sorry. I uh, we we dropped a line about tiny little dinosaurs, and my mouth uttered coelacanths. I what I meant to say, them. what I meant to say with was compsignathus. Mm -hmm. Compsignathus. They called them sorry. compies. I remember that. Sorry about that, there everybody. Is. No, <laughs> what no, is a coelacanth? A coelacanth. That's an old fish. <laughs> is is a proof? This is amazing. Okay, a coelacanth is a very very. Um, I know I'm I, I like I don't understand a lot of social signals. I don't understand what is or isn't cute. But uh, coelacanths are generally considered ugly trash fish. They are, however, an example of a cryptid that was redis rediscovered whoosh, whoosh, not too long ago. Uh, they were thought to be uh, extinct for millions of years until uh, some Europeans in on the African continent heard stories about what sounded to them like this extinct fish and the locals said no you guys didn't discover anything we told you this fish is everywhere it's it's a trash fish no one likes it and they were like we have rediscovered the silicanth so anyway it's a real cryptid is the point yeah so I think we, it's cool. we, exactly we talked about our cryptid episode and i think 
this is the one that has a funky looking fin on the bottom that looks like it might be ready to become a, a leg of some sort in the near <laughs> evolutionary future, although it never really made it. Um, it's okay. Don't give up yet. Uh, you know, go Sealy Camp. And you know what, man? Go naked mole rats. I don't mm. want I don't want one as a pet. Uh, I don't think you can get just one. They're very much the Pringles of mammals. Um mm. Like sugar gliders, right? They have to come in pairs at least. But uh, I'm I'm glad they're here. I hope that I hope we get something for this species from the research, and I hope that these uh, I hope these not particularly beautiful animals live uh, a, a long, long time. I don't want them to expand. I think they're good where they are. Agreed. If that makes sense. Agreed. Agreed. Can you imagine if they like took the place of just your common household? You know, mouse, that'd be a much scarier situation if you saw one of those crawling out of your walls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've had about enough of this. Let's take a quick break and then we'll be back with more strange news. <laughs> 